Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today I wanted to give you another one to grow on. And specifically, I want to talk to you about ways that the narcissist blinds you with science. I've been hobby gardening for several years now and I really enjoy it. It's a great way for me to relax and I find that there's something very empowering and very satisfying and also health promoting about being able to grow and harvest my own food. Anyway, sometimes gardening is kind of a crapshoot, to be honest with you. And from season to season, sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna get, particularly in the spring, summer, like right now. Fall, winter pretty much is consistent for me. And I know what works and it's my favorite season to grow because uh, stuff really does well in our fall, winter weather here in the desert. However, in spring, summer, the weather gets a little hotter and then it becomes a question mark as to what's gonna make it, what's not gonna make it. And it, it literally can be a science experiment in a way. And I've got a few different growing areas and what I'll do is I'll just put stuff in, the things that I want to eat, and I kind of just make up my mind that I'm gonna get what I get out of it. And I'm gonna be happy with it. I'm gonna move forward with it and enjoy it, harvest what I can, and then wait for the fall winter season, which is my favorite. <laughs> in the same way that I will try different varieties of tomatoes from one year to the next, or try a different combination of foods in my growing areas, or put the same combination of foods and herbs and things in all my different growing areas to see what growing area does the best for those things. It's, it's literally like a science experiment. And I've talked to other gardeners about this as well. In the same way, the narcissist can treat you like a bit of a science experiment. And what I mean by that is they will use different psychological games and tricks and tactics to see what works and what doesn't. And in their efforts to figure out how to get control over you, how to manipulate you, how to get what they want, they will literally, they'll throw stuff at you, they'll study you first and they'll learn about you, they'll get you to download, but they'll also throw different things at you just to see what sticks, what doesn't, what gets you to respond or react in the way that they want so that they can get supply, whether it's money, whether it's attention, praise, adoration, whatever it may be they will do that. And I thought of three ways that narcissists will blind you with science. And the first is prodding by using micro manipulation tactics. It's all designed to get them what they want and need and to keep you in the dark and clueless as to what's going on and the fact that you are giving over this narcissistic supply uh, in whatever shape or form that may be and they will use micro manipulation tactics such as finding out what your areas of weakness are they'll do their research and study you or look on your social media or read your blog if you have one or look at your website try to see if they can get a feel for what your insecurities are, what your weak points are, what you're passionate about, um, things that, that bother you or areas where you may be more vulnerable and they will prod and they will throw those things maybe into a conversation or they'll poke at you with, with something that they know is a, is a sore spot for you, kind of like a sunburn and they will watch and wait to see how you react and respond to that. The point of all this is to keep you in line and to draw you close to them and to keep that supply flowing 
while they have you drawn in close. The second way that I thought of that narcissists will blind you with science is in the way that they present themselves. And specifically, they'll use mirroring. And literally, they will give you kind of visual and, and audible feedback on the things that you like, the things that you wanna see, the things that are appealing to you or that they think are appealing to you, the changes and, and things that you wanna see happen in the world, things that inspire you, that encourage you, your likes, your interests, maybe even your mannerisms, things that will, that will really draw you in and keep you there. And there may be some flattering that goes along with that praise, compliments, things like that. And the third way that I thought of that narcissists can blind you with science is through promises. And this is also known as future faking, where they will promise you something or tell you that they're going to do something or deliver something in a, at a future date or do something with you at a future date. And they'll keep moving the goalpost and keep changing, keep changing, keep changing, and it will not happen, it never comes. And meanwhile, you're kept on the hook and enticed and interested and kept involved and maybe even giving engaged in giving up supply in the form of, again, attention, praise to the narcissist, money, uh, material goods, favors, whatever it is, connections anything and they're collecting along the way while you're chasing a dangling carrot that you're never going to get and the things that they are future faking about are typically things that you've already downloaded in your conversations with them at the beginning of the relationship that they or the and or that they determine are things that are meaningful to you through their research and observations, looking at your social media. And again, this is all based on lies. The narcissist typically does not have the capacity, the interest or inclination or intention of delivering on whatever it is that they're promising or dangling in front of you. You don't know that, but they know that and it's just not going to happen, but they are definitely going to make sure that they get theirs. What can you do? Well, <laughs> hopefully this helps you to take the blinders off and be more aware as you interact with people and move forward in cultivating relationships. And I think that there are a couple of specific things that you can do. The first is to fact check whoever you may be dealing with, if it's online dating or if you've met someone or joined a group of people or whatever the case may be is to do your fact checking and if there's something that someone's telling you it could even be a family member it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship it could be on the job it could be an acquaintance it could be uh, someone that you have just met etc but to do your fact checking fact check what they're saying and do some digging, ask questions. That's always good because a lot of times narcissists will get flustered when you ask them a barrage of questions and they won't be able to answer them and they will have to pause, step back, step away. They may have to even get back to you like later, like a completely different day later. Just even simple questions because they haven't thought that through or they, they haven't figured out how to respond or how to answer in such a way that's gonna keep you on the hook. The other thing that you can do is to background check. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe you can drop some info or insights in the comments below, but for some reason we have gotten away from background checking and fact checking people, but you can do a background check on the, the person that you are dealing with and find out you know, who this is that you're dealing with. Are they credible? Do they have a track record or history? Do they have criminal background? Is there any indication that the things that they're talking to you about or talking about uh, doing with you or that they're dangling in front of you in terms of the future faking and all that, 
is there any credibility, re uh, reliability, any kind of substance there? And that doesn't take long. In a previous video, I had mentioned that after the alleged murderer had been hauled away to jail, one of the local TV producers here who had had him on her show multiple times ran a really simple background report online. I think she paid like 20 bucks, something like that. But she had a background report, report run online and all kinds of stuff came up. And this day and age and with everything that's going on right now and a lot of the dealings in particular online because it's easy for people to hide behind online profiles, fake profiles and things like that, that distance that where you, you can't really get that up close and personal interaction and they can hide behind that or use that as a way to kind of manipulate from far away or make themselves seem more credible than they really are from far away. So these are just things that you want to be aware of. What other ways can you think of that narcissists can blind you with science? What kind of psychological warfare did they launch on you? What kind of games did they play? What kind of trickery did they employ to be able to get what they wanted while they strung you along, dangled the carrots, and left you hanging? Comment below. I'd love to hear your responses. And as always, be safe out there. Take care of yourself and do your due diligence. So important. Narcissists can often blind us with science and they will throw a barrage of tactics and tricks and tools into the mix to try to see what you respond to, figure out what works, what doesn't, kind of come up with their own secret sauce to be able to manipulate you into giving them supply in the form of attention, material goods, praise, adoration, Con contacts, connections, access to you or people that you know, etc. And it's so, so important to do your due diligence. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.